Well, it's been a challenging year for Tata Motors to say the least and the new year isn't looking much better. Joining us now is the new managing director of the company. The company's also won the IMA award for the multinational company of the year. Carl Slim is of course no stranger to the Indian auto industry. Carl, appreciate you joining us here on India Business Hour and congratulations on that award. But let me start by focusing on the potential challenges for Tata Motors in India, uh, especially JLR, keeping in mind that the new import duty has been levied and also there are concerns on what happens now to growth in China and the new emission norms in China. But let's start with JLR. Um, challenges go ahead for JLR, specific to that question, is that uh, come the 1st of April, obviously uh, additional uh, import duties were put on luxury vehicles. Uh, and therefore, that really is going to stress that part of uh, the sales in India. Uh, not only JLR, of course, but all luxury uh, car makers are going to have the same kind of challenge. Uh, and I think it's a shame because obviously uh, that was one area uh, of our business, uh, of our industry, which was uh, doing well in India. And it's a shame to put the brakes on that. But uh, it, it's a common uh, issue that we'll all face. And I'm therefore uh, very confident that uh, the brand of Jaguar and the brand of Land Rover will still continue to uh, do well against the competition. Okay, additional uh, duties are worrying you in India, but let's talk about China because you get 20% of your revenues for JLR from China. It contributes 40% to your EBITDA. Can you quantify the impact of the new emission norms in China? Because that has been a big worry. Is it going to be a dampener for you as far as JLR's growth in China is concerned? Uh, it, it's obviously very difficult to, to forecast uh, what, uh, in a quantifiable manner anyway, but uh, normally when uh, these kind of uh, items get uh, put into the market, normally without any kind of um, notice as well, then it causes a, a hiccup because these are the kind of things that we really look forward to the industry and the government authorities working on together so that we can actually plan uh, so that both parties can succeed in that. So, you know, I really can't put a, a quantity on it, but uh, the norms are mixed with also a little bit of an economic downturn as far as China is concerned. Uh, but again, I, I, I really do uh, reiterate, we've seen it in India so many times, uh, we've seen it in China in the past, but maybe not so regularly, that uh, these are followed by uh, a very strong upturn as well. And uh, I think really we're more worried about India at the moment because uh, we're currently seeing a downturn that is is more deep than maybe 2008 and uh, we, we hope to see actions taken soon to make sure that this uh, doesn't uh, elongate too far. Well that's interesting you're saying you're more worried about India and the downturn that you're seeing in the Indian market is worse than perhaps or as bad as the downturn we saw in 2008. In that context let me talk about the passenger car business here in India because you've seen a steady decline in sales. The nano continues to be under pressure. Your plant in Sanand is run, running pretty much on idle capacity. There is a brand overhang. How are you going to be able to change the brand perception because that clearly seems to be plaguing Tata Motors. Yeah, as far as the passenger vehicle is concerned, I do think it's a different story. Um, uh, I would uh, talk about uh, sales in a different manner. Our retail sales have grown over the last uh, few months. Uh, month on month, we've grown our retail sales. However, uh, because of the economic environment, we have taken the steps to reduce our uh, inventory, both at dealers and uh, in the field ourselves. And hence that uh, shows in the market numbers that we uh, report in the media every month. So um, whilst the story in, uh, of what the offtake or the wholesale number is, uh, is, is not as great as the retail number, it's the right thing to do for us to be able to right size our business. And uh, that's certainly one of the uh, hygiene tasks that I've taken on. Um, as far as our brand is concerned, you, you quite rightly mentioned perception and uh, unfortunately perception change lags reality change and uh, we've certainly made uh, huge changes as far as our product quality is concerned. Um, the most recent launches of Safari Storm, the Vista D90 and uh, also the Manza Club Class have uh, got great reviews in the market and as uh, now we've seen the feedback from the initial customers then their quality levels are equal to anybody else in the marketplace so we've made those changes 
But as you said, perception uh, is there, and it really is up to us to maintain this kind of focus, this kind of uh, central focus on the customer, and not just in the quality of the vehicle, but the customer-centric customer organization, so that we can also change perception as well as reality. So definitely a priority that we must not minimize as we go forward. It's not just difficult for you on the passenger car side, it's extremely difficult on your bread and butter segment, the commercial vehicle segment, Carl. When can we expect to see some kind of a turnaround there? What are you anticipating on the basis of the general malaise in the, and the slowdown in the economy and competition? The commercial vehicle buyer is not somebody that gets influenced by a message in the newspaper or from the government tomorrow. He's going to want to see a consistent uh, improvement in the economy before he's going to invest into uh, expanding his fleet, replacing his fleet, etc. So I think from when we see some kind of economic turnaround, we can expect another six to eight months before uh, we would see any kind of return to the, to the commercial vehicle business. So Carl, given the domestic context, given the slowdown, what levers are you going to be pushing in order to restart growth, in order to turn the company's fortunes in the domestic market around? Let's not talk about JLR because that's doing fine, but what about the domestic story? What levers do you have now to turn the story around? Uh, I think I've been very uh, open to the fact that, uh, and you're as wise as I am to note that uh, in the Indian passenger car business then new products, new offerings are what generate the sales and uh, when we talk about uh, those OEMs that have had a reasonable year over this very uh, miserable year that we've just gone through then it's new products that have been uh, the winners um, and as I say I've been honest to say that I don't think we've had the kind of new products uh, in the market not only the past year but uh, the year previous to that as well it's been at least two years since we came with a new new product to the market uh, so when I think about our priorities it's really emphasis, emphasis is on the product and not just uh, bringing the next new car but it's important that we have an ongoing product refreshment cycle that continues to recognize what's required in the market, what excites the customer from product and features, and then making sure we have a long-term delivery design, engineering, and manufacturing plan to support that. So I think really it's, uh, that's been our shortcoming. That's why we, we have this uh, issue in the market uh, as of today. Uh, we have good cars in the market today. We just doesn't, haven't had a a refreshment plan in the last couple of years as far as new new products are concerned and therefore that's been uh, a huge part of my time in the last uh, few months and uh, will continue to be in the future because that will continue to be a driver for the people that succeed in the Indian market. All right, Carl Slim, you're betting on new, new products and you hope to launch the first really new product in the next 12 months. Appreciate you joining us here and we wish you the very best of luck for what hopefully should be a better year.